thanks for watching this little video of this hike. Um, it's a pretty easy trail up and back. Uh, hardest part is this initial little quarter mile climb up to the water tower. Feel free to skip ahead here to the 4 minute and 45 second mark where I get a little something and I try to place some markers along the way. Interesting little tidbits about the hike. When I first hiked up here about a year ago, um, I did take that road that goes over to the bridge and uh, there's some water crossing there. It kind of gets a little slippery, so if you do go that way, be careful. Last time I was up here, I put this rock on the curb just to remind myself that uh, this is where the trail starts, but can't guarantee it'll be there when you come. So there's a slight split here. If you go to the right, that'll take you back to that bridge where the water's crossing, so you want to stay left right here.
This is a bit of a sarcastic comment because this is where I came out to clear the trail uh, just a few days prior to coming out to film this hike. So it's nice and wide right now so you don't get pokies all over your pants. I've never taken this path here to the left. Uh, I'll have to come back and clear that up a bit too, so we can take a detour if you want. This final turn here is where we reach the creek crossing. So I don't know, I saw this open flat spot here. I thought it'd be kind of cool to have a picnic bench or table here. So if you guys just stop here and turn back around, it'll be about a one mile hike altogether by the time you get back to the road. I am planning to come back here and uh, make this trail a little bit more clear. Maybe put the stones in a in a manner that indicates how to get around this area as it leads back to the Cal Canyon Trail. The reason I like coming down this way instead of just taking the uh, the other top of the Cal Canyon Trail is because this is just more of a forested area, and I kind of like looking at this and the smells and sounds around this area rather than just walking on sand. With that said, because not a lot of people come through this area, I do definitely recommend that you come in groups or at least with one other person and carry pepper spray or something just in case you encounter some wildlife that doesn't just scamper off when it hears you or sees you. I am putting an affiliate link to uh, my favorite pepper spray, which is the Palm P-O-M brand pepper spray from Amazon. Um, that's what I've always carried and I carry it all the time. It only costs around $12 and uh, that's my disclaimer that if you order through that link I will get a tiny commission from it.
I wasn't quite sure which way to go here. I didn't remember, so as I want to keep going down the trail, I decided to go left as that goes south. So when you reach this sandy bit here, this road, it's technically the east side of the Cal Canyon Trail that you can see on the Google Maps. I don't know if the trail itself is called the Cal Canyon Trail, but in Google that's what this area shows to be, so that's what I call it. As you can probably tell, most of this uh, road path here is very sandy, so that's another reason that I kind of just don't like it. It's a little harder to walk on and gets you more tired as when you're walking on the beach. video was recorded in early September so we got a lot of heat this summer I'm surprised that everything is still as uh, green as it is up here. Here, but these notes were all recorded after the fact. Um, when I was up here by myself, I didn't have any music playing or anything just so I can hear everything around me. So I wasn't even talking to myself.
careful on the left here because uh, you can probably hear it in person there's the creek running down there and this cliff is a pretty steep drop off I had my camera mounted on a pole so I'm not just hanging over the edge like this So at this point we were of what I call the Cow Canyon Loop Trail. If you hang a right here and start heading back up north, you would be going back towards uh, where we came from, but on the other side of the west side of the loop. So instead here I'm continuing down south and um, this goes towards the riverbed that I reached at uh, one point like a year ago when I came up here and hiked.
you'll want to be careful again approaching this little dip here because uh, it's a pretty steep drop down to the bottom where the creek's flowing again. So this is the point where I stop the, the hike down south and I turn around because this is a little bit overgrown. I could have pushed past it but I wanted to stop right here. This is where I'm going to come back to clean this up as well so that the trail is clear to keep going down south to the riverbed if somebody wants to. So we're at about 22 minutes of a hike. I was going at a pretty moderate pace so on the way back provided you don't get lost like you'll see later like I did um, I overshot my turn so you know should be able to make this round trip in 45 minutes flat easily The views that you see coming down the trail here are pretty amazing. I always like reaching the, this summit point uh, because of the views you get to see on the way down again. I was holding my camera kind of at my hip height so uh, the view from your eye level is a little bit better than this. For sure but I think uh, a lot of these burned trees are from the 2018 holy fire as I mentioned on one of my text notes before
So at this point here, I missed the, the turn back to our unclear trail, back to where the creek crosses. Um, I was kind of just daydreaming and completely missed it. I decided to go right here because I wanted to keep on the east side of the of the loop. But as you can see from my markers on the map, I overshot the turn I was supposed to make. But anyway, if you were to have gone left or continue on this trail right here, they'll both lead you around back over to that bridge crossing where the water uh, makes that bridge a little slippery. So either way, you'll get back to that road where the you went up to the water tower. This all started to feel a little bit unfamiliar to me, so this is where I was looking a little left and right, thinking this doesn't look right. I didn't remember this uh, different colored sand on the right here, especially. And that's when I realized that, uh, well, I better whip out my phone and check the, the GPS because it just didn't feel right. So that's another suggestion that I would make here is you can download the offline maps um, on Google or on Another app I use is called OnX Hunt. It shows you a lot of good information on maps about private property lines and then what's public land. That's kind of what I started using when I came out to explore here. And on that also, it'll track your GPS location even if you don't have cell reception. So you can still see where you are on the map. So even coming back through here, it was a little bit difficult to tell where the entrance was again. Uh, from this angle, you can kind of see that the path is a little bit clear. So I decided to just stack some stones up so that I don't miss it again next time. Uh, try to make it, make it a little bit clearer. Maybe put some stones in a line that kind of guides that way.
this here was the second time that I got a little bit lost on the way back because it didn't look obviously the same as when you came up so I couldn't tell whether I should go right or left around this bush or that one um, I don't remember pushing aside too much when I came through so I figured this wasn't the path and I probably came around the other side there Well, that's about it from here on back. There's no more getting lost, no more mysteries. Um, Got to come back and cover that graffiti up. I really don't appreciate seeing it when you're trying to go out and enjoy nature and find some peace. I hope you guys can come out and enjoy this trail about as much as I do. Uh, I have no more comments from here on out, so you can enjoy the music the rest of the way back or just us. Uh, Stop the video here. Alright, see you guys.